Let me warn you that this demo is not OSHA approved. Kids do not try this at home. We want to see what the difference is between heat and temperature. They seem to be the same, but they're actually different. Let's take a look. I have this hot lead inside of boiling water. Now the lead should be the same temperature as the water. You can see that the water is 100 degrees Celsius on the thermometer. So I'm going to take some of this hot lead and in the name of education, I'm going to put this hot lead into my bare hand and try not to scream. Toasty, toasty. Mm. Mm. Not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, all right. So, as you can see, this is this is not a trick. I do, in fact, have the lead in my hand. Really, only took a few seconds for the lead to cool down. It's comfortable now. It feels fine. In fact, let's, uh, let's put this into my other hand and let's see if there's any burn marks. A mm, little bit red, not too bad. So it really didn't burn my hand. So would I do the same thing with, with the water now? And the answer of course to that is no. I would not take an equal amount of water and put it into my hand. Why is that? Well, I would scream. That would burn really bad. And so the point is, we see that lead burns my hand less than water. Why is that? Well, the lead actually holds less heat than the water. Even though they're at the same temperature, the lead transferred less heat to my hand. And that's a characteristic of the substance lead that we could call heat capacity. So lead has a lower heat capacity, it holds less heat than water. And that's why this works. So even though the temperature of both the lead and the water are the same, the water would transfer a lot more heat than the lead does. And that's because lead has a much lower heat capacity than water. Water stores a lot more heat. Maybe we could think a little bit about why that might be. Well, it has to do with the unique structure of water. Water has this structure, and the oxygens are partially negative, the hydrogens are partially positive in their charge. So this results in attractive forces. The positive hydrogen attracts to the partially negative oxygen. And this is an especially strong attraction that we call a hydrogen bond. Now, we might illustrate this with, uh, with a rubber band, for instance. So if I was to stretch this rubber band, when I do that, it stores heat. So when I stretch a rubber band, it stores energy as potential energy. If I release that rubber band, it releases that energy. In the same way, these bonds are getting stretched. So the hydrogen bond here gets stretched as water heats up. And in a sense, there's a, there's a comparison or analogy just like the rubber band where we see it is um, storing energy. So water, again due to its structure, has the ability to store a lot of energy. And that's why water has a much higher heat capacity than lead. And I would definitely not want to put the water on my hand because I'd be sure to burn.